Early Buddhist texts EBTs, early Buddhist literature or early Buddhist discourses refers to the parallel texts shared by the early Buddhist schools, including the first four Pali Nikayas, some Vinaya material like the Patamokkas of the different Buddhist schools as well as the Chinese Agama literature. Besides the large collections in Pali and Chinese, there are also fragmentary collections of EBT materials in Sanskrit, Cottonese, Tibetan and Gandhari. The modern study of early pre-sectarian Buddhism often relies on comparative scholarship using these various early Buddhist sources. Some scholars such as Richard Gombrich, Alexander Wynne and A.K. Warder hold that early Buddhist texts contain material that could possibly be traced to the historical Buddha himself or at least to the early years of pre-sectarian Buddhism. In Mahayana Buddhism, these texts are sometimes referred to as Hinayana or Sravakayana texts and are not considered Mahayana works. Overview Different genres comprise the early Buddhist texts, including prose, suttas, skt, sutra, discourses, various forms of verse compositions such as gather and udana, mixed prose and verse works and also lists of monastic rules or doctrinal topics. A large portion of early Buddhist literature is part of the sutta or sutra. Genre, these are usually placed in different collections called Nikayas or Agamas and constitute the Sutta Pitaka, SKT, Sutra Pitaka, Basket of Sutras, section of the various early Buddhist Tripitakas, Three Baskets. The suttas generally contain doctrinal, spiritual, and philosophical content. These texts were initially transmitted through oral methods. According to Marcus Bingenheimer, after the death of the founder, Buddhist texts were transmitted orally in Middle Indo-Aryan dialects Prakrits. While the southern tradition eventually settled on one of these dialects, Pali, as its canonical language, in India and Central Asia Buddhist texts were successively Sanskritized and or translated into other languages such as Chinese, Tocharian, Cottonese, Sogdian, and Tibetan. Also, new Buddhist texts in India, from at least the 3rd century onward, were directly composed in standard Sanskrit. Manuscripts from the Northern tradition, especially those of Central Asian provenance, are therefore often in Prakrit especially Gandhari or some non-standard form of Sanskrit, sometimes called Buddhist Sanskrit, an intermediate stage between some Prakrit and standard Sanskrit. An important feature of the early Buddhist texts are formal characteristics which reflect their origin as orally transmitted literature such as the use of repetition and rhetorical formulas. Early Buddhist texts are believed to have been transmitted by lineages of Barnaka, monks who specialized in memorization and recitation of particular collections of texts, until they were eventually recorded in writing after the 1st century BCE. As noted by Alexander Wynne, although there is no evidence for writing before Ahsoka, the accuracy of oral transmission should not be underestimated. The Buddhist community was full of Brahmins who knew that the Vedic educational system had transmitted a mass of difficult texts, verbatim, in an increasingly archaic language, for more than a thousand years. Since the early Buddhists required a different means of oral transmission, for quite different texts, other mnemonic techniques were developed, based on communal chanting sangiti. The texts explicitly state that this method was to be employed, and their actual form shows that it was, on a grand scale. Some scholars, such as Wynne and Analeo, generally hold that these texts were memorized in fixed form, to be recited verbatim, in contrast to other forms of oral literature, such as epic poetry, and that this was affirmed during communal recitations, where there is little room for improvisation, while others argue that they could have been performed in more poetic and improvisational ways. L.S. Cousins, Rupert Gethin through the use of basic lists or formulas, according to Oscar von Hinuber the main purpose for the composition of the EBTs was to preserve and to defend an orthodox tradition, and that this literary effort was influenced by the Vedic prose of the Brahmanas. As noted by von Hinuba, these collections also contain the first ever Indian texts to commemorate historical events, such as the Mahaparinibbanasuttanta, which recounts the death of the Buddha. The early suttas also almost always open by introducing the geographical location of the event they depict, including ancient place names, always preceded by the phrase, Thus have I heard, Evam Misutam. The textual evidence from various traditions shows that by the 1st century BCE to the 4th century CE, slight differences developed among these parallel documents and that these differences reflected school affiliation, local traditions, linguistic environment, non-standardized scripts, or any combination of these factors." 
According to Alexander Wynne, the Edicts of Ashoka see the Minor Rock Edict no. 3 mention some Buddhist texts which have been identified and which might show that at the time of Ashoka 304-232 BCE, these were already fixed. Other Indian inscriptions from the 1st and 2nd century CE include terms such as Dhamma Kathika, Petakan, and Suttantika, indicating the existence of a Buddhist literature during this time. Regarding the setting, the EBTs generally depict the world of the second urbanization period, which features small-scale towns and villages, and small competing states the Mahajanapadas with a lower level of urbanization compared to that of the Mauryan era. The EBTs also depict a small-scale local economy, during a time before the establishment of the long-distance trading networks, as noted by Brahmali and Sajato, King Pasanadi of Kosala is said to have used Kasi sandalwood MN indicating that even the highest social strata used locally produced luxuries. This situation is perhaps to be expected given the political divisions in North India at the time, which may have complicated long distance trade. As noted by von Hinuba, the omission of any mention of the Mauryas in EBTs such as the Mahaparinibbana in contrast to other later Buddhist texts which do mention them, is also evidence of its pre Mauryan date, given the importance of the rise of the Maurya Empire even under Chandragupta, who is better known for his inclination towards Jainism. One might conjecture that the latest date for the composition of the Mahaparinibbana. Suttanta, at least for this part of it, is around 350 to 320 BC. Topic: <inaudible> Extant material. Most modern scholarship has generally focused on the Pali Nikayas, which have been fully translated into Western languages, and the Chinese Agamas, only partially translated. During the 20th century various scholars including Anasaki Masaharu and Akanuma Chinzen, noticed how both of these collections contained parallel texts and began a critical study of their correspondences. Probably the most important early works in the comparative study of these two collections are Anasaki's The Four Buddhist Agamas in Chinese, a concordance of their parts and of the corresponding counterparts in the Pali Nikayas and Akanumas The Comparative Catalogue of Chinese Agamas and Pali Nikayas. Recent work has also been done on other more fragmentary materials surviving in Sanskrit, Tibetan and Gandhari collections. <laughs> Pali EBTs The Pali canon of the Theravada school contains the most complete fully extant collection of EBTs in an Indic language which has survived until today. According to the Theravada tradition, after having been passed down orally, it was first written down in the 1st century BCE in Sri Lanka. While some scholars such as Gregory Chopin are skeptical of the antiquity of the Pali texts, Alexander Wynne notes that, canonical fragments are included in the Golden Pali text, found in a reliquary from Sri Kasetra dating to the late 3rd or early 4th century AD, they agree almost exactly with extant Pali manuscripts. This means that the Pali Tipitaka has been transmitted with a high degree of accuracy for well over 1,500 years. There is no reason why such an accurate transmission should not be projected back a number of centuries, at the least to the period when it was written down in the 1st century BC, and probably further. The early Buddhist material in the Pali Canon mainly consists of the first four Pali Nikayas, the Patamokkha basic list of monastic rules, and other Vinaya material, as well as some parts of the Kutaka Nikaya, mainly Sutta Nipata, Itavutaka, Dhammapada, Theragatha, Theragatha, and the Udana. These texts have been widely translated into Western languages. Topic: <inaudible> Chinese EBTs. The EBTs preserved in the Chinese Buddhist canon include the Agamas, collections of sutras which parallel the Pali Nikayas in content as well as structure. There are also some differences between the discourses and collections as modern comparative studies has shown, such as omissions of material, additions and shifts in the location of phrases. These various agamas possibly come down to us from the Sarvastivada, the Samyukta and Majjhima agamas, Dharmaguptaka and Kasyapa schools. The Mahasamhika Vinaya Pitaka also survives in Chinese translation. Some of the agamas have been translated into English by the Agama Research Group (ARG) at the Dharma Drum Institute of Liberal Arts. The language of these texts is a form of ancient Chinese termed Buddhist Chinese, Hanyu Fu Hanyu, or Buddhist hybrid Chinese, Hanyu Fu Hanyu, which shows considerable vernacularity. 
Buddhist Chinese also shows a significant number of elements which derive from the source language, including calques and phonological transcriptions. Scholarly analysis of these texts have shown that they were translated from Middle Indic Prakrit source languages, with varying degrees of Sanskritization, while the other Chinese agamas are mostly doctrinally consistent with the Pali Nikayas. The Ekotera Agama has been seen by various scholars such as Johannes Bronkhorst and Etienne Lamotte as being influenced by later Mahayana concepts. According to Lamotte, these interpolations are easily discernible. According to Analeo, the most often proposed hypothesis is that the EA derives from the Mahasamgika school. Topic: <inaudible> EBTs from Pakistan and Afghanistan. Modern discoveries of various fragmentary manuscript collections from Pakistan and Afghanistan has contributed significantly to the study of early Buddhist texts. Most of these texts are written in the Gandhari language and the Kharosthi script, but some have also been discovered in Bactrian. The Gandharan Buddhist texts contain several EBTs, such as a parallel to the Anatalakana Sutta, possibly belonging to the Dharmaguptaka school. A few publications have translated some of these texts. According to Mark Allen, the most recent major finds include the following collections The British Library Kharosthi Manuscripts. Birch bark scrolls in the Gandhari language and the Kharosthi script, possibly belonging to the Dharmaguptaka school. They include prose sutras and verse works like parts of the Dharmapada dating to the 1st century CE, making them the earliest EBT manuscripts discovered. The senior Kharosthi manuscripts. Birch bark scrolls in the Gandhari language and the Kharosthi script, possibly belonging to the Dharmaguptaka school. Most of these preserve canonical prose sutras, as well as some biographical material on the Buddha's life associated with the Vinaya. The Shoyan Manuscripts, discovered in the Bamiyan Caves, a collection which preserves both EBT texts, Abhidharma and Mahayana texts in either Sanskrit or Gandhari. Another important recent find is, a substantial portion of a large Sanskrit birch bark manuscript of the Durgagama, the division of the canon containing long discourses, belonging to the Sarvastivada school, which dates to the 7th or 8th centuries AD. <inaudible> Abhidharma The various Abhidharma texts and collections Patakas are considered by scholars to be mostly later material 3rd century BCE onwards and thus are not EBTs. In spite of the relative lateness of the Abhidharma works, according to scholars like Eric Frauwallner, there are kernels of early pre-sectarian material in the earliest layer of the Abhidharma literature, such as in the Theravada Vibhunga, the Dharmaskanda of the Sarvastivada, and the Saraputravidharma of the Dharmaguptaka school. According to Frau Wallner's comparative study, these texts were possibly developed and constructed from the same material, mainly early Buddhist doctrinal lists Pali, Matika, Sanskrit, Matka, which forms the ancient core of early Abhidharma. <laughs> Other fragmentary sources There are various EBTs collected in the Tibetan Kangyur. Peter Skilling has published English translations of these texts in his two-volume, Mahasutras, Pali Text Society, 1994. Another important source of early Buddhist material in the Tibetan canon are numerous quotations by Samathadeva in his Abhidharmakosophayika Tika Dirge No. 4094, Peking No. 5595, a commentary to the Abhidharmakosha. Some of this material is available in English translation by Bhikkhuni Damodina. Likewise, numerous sutra quotations by authors of Sautrantika treatises are also a source of EBT fragments. The Sautrantika school was known for focusing on using examples from and references to EBT sutras. These works include Kumaralata's Dristantapankti, the Abhidhamamtara Sasastra attributed to Gosaka, the Abhidhamavatara Sastra attributed to Skandila and the Tattvajati of Harivarman. Sanskritized fragments of different early Buddhist agamas also survive from archaeological finds in the Tarim Basin and the city of Turfan. These finds include versions of a Sanskrit Udanavaga. The Salistamba Sutra is an early Buddhist text which has been tied to the Mahasamhika school. It contains many parallel passages to the Pali suttas. Mahayana treatises also sometimes quote EBTs. 
According to Etienne Lamotte, the Da Gidi Lun cites about a hundred sutras of the lesser vehicle, the majority are borrowed from the Agama collections. See also Buddhavacana Index of Buddhism-related articles Vinaya Pitaka List of sutras List of suttas Sutta Pitaka <laughs>